OK, so let's talk then about uh, well, one that's slightly more divisive between us. Uh, let's talk about Greed, new film from Michael Winterbottom yep. and starring none other than Sir Steve of Coogan. Uh, do you want to you take this away? Because I think yeah. you describe the plot better than I do. OK, so it's a satire on the fashion industry. Mm. So we're focusing on this fictitious fashion mogul called Richard Greedy McCready. I love as it, he's known. I love it, Greedy McCready. Uh, yeah, very clever play on words mm. there from Michael Winter- Winterbottom. Um, and it, it's centred around the lead up to his very elaborate 60th birthday celebrations in Mykonos and we basically follow this story from his rise to fortune and infamy and Mm -hmm. basically how he put well the portrayal of a man who drives the most incredibly hard bargain (laughs) manages to pocket all the money for himself but yet there's also this sense that all the workers around him are struggling to make ends meet you can't read the name of the shop it's white on white in other words that is page one of the manual, isn't it? In fact, it's front cover of the f- book. Name recognition. Yeah. See, if you don't sort this out here, the writing is on the wall for you. So it won't be white on white, it will be red on brown. Do you know what those colours are for, Neil? Uh, is it blood and who? Yeah, correct. Well done. There's hope for you yet, Neil. This is positive reinforcement. This is me motivating you. I've got to be honest. I, I know you weren't a fan of this one. Uh, you, well, you know, I, 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 I loved it. I really did. Okay. The, the, well, I could start with why I wasn't a fan. Michael Winterbottom's work yeah. is kind of you either like it or you don't really. It's a, it's a it's, bit marmite. Yeah, it is mm. a bit marmite. And I, we talked a, a little bit off off air about twenty four hour party people, which I do think this is directly comparable to. Yeah, and you know, and I think that almost became iconic at the time. But I think it's sort of lifted by it was almost more realistic because the 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 nineties sort of music scene and rave scene was was surreal in itself. But here, what we're talking about is fashion, and, yeah. and essentially a sweatshop <laughs> of workers and and a guy whose benefit is two very big extremes, right? Yeah, and. Don't get me wrong, Steve Coogan is brilliant in everything that he's he's in, whether he's playing a more um, serious role or if he's like playing a more comedic role. Now, what Michael Winterbottom d- has done here is create all the characters to a level which is almost grotesque in a caricature. So what we're seeing is the opportunity to take a story, tell it really well, but they've pulled it like Stretch Armstrong, okay? It's pulled so far that you kind of sit in this realm where you're like, do I even believe that these characters would ever exist? Well, uh, I, and is it serious enough hmm. for me to go, oh, you're trying to, yeah. you're basically ta- making a, a, a film about Philip Green? That's it. I mean, it is it, it is quite clear who the target of this, yes. this satire is. I mean, it's very evident. But I, I do say, though, it's no more particularly obnoxious with it than, for instance, Malcolm Tucker is as a parody of Alistair Campbell. Yes, but, but stuff like In mm. the Loop or, yeah. you know, the, the films like that or W1A or whatever that is... Yeah. The, the fact that you haven't got these big named actors in it, so we've got David Mitchell in it, we've got Isla Fisher, we've yeah. got um, Caroline Flack is in the very beginning I of this I noticed movie. that as well. That was very uncomfortable. We'll come on wasn't to that, it? yeah. We'll you, co- were you in a screening? Was there a. Ooh, no, there was a, a there was a, a notification that this was going to come oh. up because I went to a screening just after. Oh, you saw one a couple of days after yeah. me, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, so um, just after everything sadly had happened with Caroline Flack. So yeah. it is quite jarring to then suddenly see that. And I don't know if it sort of sets it in a bit of a bizarre way, but you know, what we're talking about is a man who's talking about billions of pounds. Mm. And people that are working 10 hour days in Sri Lanka that are yeah. earning five pounds. Shake my hand, let's go to Dill. Move on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I personally thought, because obviously I'm, I'm, I, I like a nasty character. I like a. a but he dark... wasn't believable. That's my problem. Like, I, I like a nasty character. Yeah, well. that's the thing for me, though, because I take a Michael Winterbottom Steve Coogan collaboration in very much the same way as I do a Woody Allen film. Yeah. Which is, I know I'm not going in here for deeply rich character intros- introspection. I'm going in for. Uh, just a satirical good time. Just a good, a good time. Let's poke some fun at some people and we'll move on. Uh, 24 Hour Party People has slightly more pathos than, for instance, things like a cock and bull story or this. Yeah. But as far as one of the more flimsier popcorny efforts between these two goes, I had a good time with it. I, I don't think it's for everyone in that same way that I don't think a Woody Allen film is for everyone. Or I don't think Party pe- uh, 24 Hour Party People is really a film that's for everyone. You have to have some sort of emotional attachment to that music, to that region. Um, for me though, just seeing Steve Coogan have a good time, seeing the cast that's in this, knowing, you because you know from minute one where this is going to go as well, uh, all the fun they have about completely reading Gladiator the wrong way and things like that. Yeah. I, I, th- <laughs> yeah. I, I just had a ball with it. I can't wait to see it again, but I will admit 
it's nowhere near as strong a film as, for instance, 25 Pipe yeah. but I did like it a lot more than I liked A Cock and Bull Story. Okay, well, I thought A Cock and Bull Story was pretty poor. So did you? Yeah, oh, okay, that works. Um, Thumbs up from down from do, me. Do you know what? Mm. The, the story I would have liked to have seen yeah. and the character I, or the portrayal I would have liked to have seen carried through was Jamie Blackley's portrayal of Richard McCready, the younger. Oh, the younger, McCready. yes. I looks thought, like you, doesn't he? Yes, and I thought his through line of, of the story was actually a lot stronger than when we mm. got to this complete caricature that was yeah. Steve Coogan's version of it. So for me, it's probably a one thumb film. Right. One and a half for me. Okay. Uh, and that extra half is only because it's not 24 hour pipe. <laughs> fine, fine. 